Former World of Stardom champion Julia appears ringside at NXT Stand and Deliver, seemingly indicating she has signed with WWE, but when is she due to report to the WWE Performance Center? We'll let you know all of the details on that. Plus, a new championship has been confirmed for NXT, that being the Women's NXT North American Championship. All of the details about that huge announcement. Trick Williams conquered his best friend in the main event against Carmelo Hayes. Roxanne Perez is the brand new NXT Women's Champion. Ilya Dragunov kept his NXT Championship. The NXT Tag Team titles were on the line in the opening match of the show. We'll let you know what happened there. Obafemi is still the NXT North American Champion. NXT Standard Liver breaks an attendance record for WWE's developmental brand. And the formerly retired Rich Holland is back in NXT. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off with some big developing and breaking news regarding Julia, a long rumored target for WWE. And it looks like WWE have got the person they were chasing for quite some time. And the evidence has come at this afternoon's NXT Stand and Deliver show. Now, former World of Stardom champion Julia had a cameo during WWE NXT Stand and Deliver in the style of incoming free agents from takeovers of the past. Now, ahead of the NXT Women's Championship match between Lara Valkyria and Roxanne Perez. But after NXT General Manager Ava announced the creation of a brand new championship, we'll get to that in just a second, Julia was shown standing in attendance alongside William Regal and Rossi Agawa, lending credence to the belief that she is expected to sign with WWE and report to the NXT brand after a brief stint in Agawa's own promotion, which is set to be launched soon in Japan. Now, Julia is one of the world's most revered women's wrestlers after enjoying a dominant run in Japan. With Stardom, she won the Artist of Stardom, Goddess of Stardom, and Wonder of Stardom, and World of Stardom Championships, as well as earning victories in the Cinderella Tournament in 2020, the Five Star Grand Prix Round Robin Tournament in 2022. She also held the New Japan Strong Women's Openweight Championship up until last month. Julia has reportedly been expected to sign with WWE for months now, leading up to her stardom departure, and it's been further reported that she is expected to report to the WWE Performance Center after she wraps up her prior commitments. Now, more details of this come courtesy of Fightful Select. And this was actually broken prior to the show, prior to Julia appearing at ringside on Stand and Deliver. Now, Julia, as I mentioned, has long been reported to be on her way to WWE after a short stint in Rossi Agawa's new promotion. And now Fightful Select say they have learned more on WWE's plans for the former stardom name. Fightful Select's Corey Brennan has been told by multiple NXT sources that Julia will be reporting to the WWE Performance Center and NXT upon the completion of her remaining dates with an immediate main roster debut ruled out. While not an issue by any means, officials are said to be happy at Julia's recent progression in learning English. Now, one rumor that was common several months ago was that there were concerns in the industry regarding Julia being too stiff in the ring. This is something that is not a concern in WWE with multiple sources dismissing it as just that, a rumour. Talent and members of the NXT production team believed, but this was again prior to NXT Stand and Deliver, that Julia would be present at Stand and Deliver, and there was talk about this throwback to having NXT signings being shown in the crowd, possibly happening at the PLE, and that's exactly what happened during the show. So what did you make of Julia being there? What did you make of her future? What did you make of, once again, having new free agent signings appear in the crowd at big NXT events? Let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section below. Now, this was a massive announcement coming out of this evening's uh, NXT Premium Live event because coming off an astounding victory for Thea Hale, Kalani Jordan and Fallon Henley over JC Jane, Kiana James and Izzy Dame at NXT Stand and Deliver, General Manager Ava made an announcement that is guaranteed to change the landscape of the NXT Women's Division. Displayed proudly behind her with a bright white strap and golden emblem, the newly announced NXT Women's North American Championship. Now, there is little known about the NXT Women's North American Championship, including who will be crowned the inaugural champion and how. It is assumed that this will operate similarly to its uh, male counterpart, the NXT North American Championship, as a mid-card singles title for the NXT Women's Division. Now, Reign cited the incredible work of the NXT Women's Locker Room for the creation of the title, calling their female superstars the best women's division in all of professional wrestling. 
Now, after the unification of the NXT Women's Tag Team Championships and the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships in June of last year, the only available title for female NXT superstars was the main title, the NXT Women's Championship. Now, female NXT superstars will be able to pursue the singles mid-card title, potentially opening up many doors for more female matches on the brand. Now, shortly after the announcement, that's when Julia appeared in the crowd alongside William Regal and Rossi Agawa. So maybe, just maybe, could Julia be the first holder of the this newly um, announced championship. Let me know your thoughts about that too. Drake Williams whooped that trick and he whooped his former best friend in the main event of NXT Stand and Deliver. Trick Williams has stood and delivered. In the main event of NXT Stand and Deliver, Trick Williams defeated Carmelo Hayes. The finish saw Trick hit Melo with his trick shot knee. The bout featured a ref bump, Carmelo kicking out of, um, no, excuse me, Trick kicking out of nothing but nets and the referee preventing Melo from using a chair once he came to as well. Of course, this had been building up for several times. And also, it was historic as this was the first time two black men have main evented an NXT PLE. Williams and Carmelo were aligned immediately upon Trick's arrival on the, on the uh, NXT roster in uh, September 2021. The two remained close friends until Trick was laid out by a mystery attacker in October of 2023. Carmelo officially turned on Trick and revealed himself as the mystery attacker at NXT Vengeance Day 2024. What were your thoughts on that main event bout? Did it live up to the hype? Let me know your thoughts about that too. We have the brand new NXT Women's Champion. Roxanne Perez is a two-time NXT Women's Champion. After tapping out Lyra Valkyria with a crossface at Stand and Deliver, Perez targeted Valkyria's injured shoulder, an injury she suffered at the hands of Perez weeks ago when she had to be stretched out of the NXT Performance Center. Perez dominated the former champion to start beating down on her shoulder and going for multiple submissions. Valkyria was able to battle back, but she was not being able to lift her challenger due to the injury. At one point in the bout, Valkyria was was hit with a tornado DDT on the floor after Perez dove to the outside. Tatum Paxley also appeared ringside at one point to help her friend Valkyria when she was down in the corner, but did not interfere in the match even when Perez went to stomp on the former champion's arm. Valkyria was able to escape the stomp but couldn't capitalize once more. Perez attempted to get Valkyria into a crossface submission multiple times and the two traded pin attempts back and forth. Perez was finally able to hit a pop rocks, turning it into another crossface attempt, this time locking it in. Valkyria attempted Attempted to get to the ropes, but Perez regained control. Valkyria tapped out in the middle of the ring, and Perez regained the NXT Women's Championship clean, the same title that she lost this time last year. Now, also, we have an NXT champion, but not a title change because Ilya Dragunov is still the NXT champion, though he may be the Don of NXT. Tony D'Angelo is still not the top dog of the brand as Ilya Dragunov retained the NXT championship in a hard-fought battle that culminated in a show of mutual respect between champion and challenger at Stand and Deliver. D'Angelo was put through the ringer, taking an H-bomb on the floor outside of the ring through the Spanish announce table, and then a super H-bomb before Dragunov's secured the victory. The story of the match seemed to be D'Angelo both refusing assistance from his confidant Channing Stax Lorenzo and being unable to secure the upper hand over Dragunov for any length of time, perhaps teasing a shift in character from the purported mob boss soon to come. At one point, with D'Angelo compromised in a neck crank by Dragunov, Lorenzo ascended to the ring apron looking to interfere, only to be uh, only to, to be turned back by the Don. Later, Lorenzo had a pair of brass knucks at the ready, but as he went to hand them to D'Angelo, he was refused once more, being told, I don't want that. Dragunov took full advantage, maintaining the upper hand and seemingly finding a common ground in an uptick of violence with D'Angelo as they hit the outside, both grabbing the Spanish announce table's cover and clearing the monitors and microphones in tandem as if to say, yes sir, let's do this. D'Angelo came up on the wrong side of that head-to-head, -head, however, and a series of H-bombs from the champion was ultimately the deciding factor. Now, the show opened with an NXT Tag Team Championship match. Now, some were expecting Bron Breaker to drop the championship and officially complete his move to the main roster, but though that's not the case as of right now. Bron Breaker and Baron Corbin took on Nathan Fraser and Axiom for the NXT Tag Team Championships to kick off a WrestleMania weekend pack full of high-profile tag team action. One interrupted entrance and many near falls later, the Wolf Dogs retained their titles and stood tall over their electrifying competition to open, stand, and deliver. The match began with 
Chaos, Fraser and Axiom attack the Wolf Dogs during their entrance and put the NXT Tag Team Champions in a corner several times during the bout. But each time the Wolf Dogs big back in order to keep the fight going, the match began to unravel for the challengers when Corbin landed an end of days on Axiom. Fraser narrowly missed a similar fate but ran out of the move straight into a spear from Breaker. Corbin pinned Fraser to retain the NXT Tag Team titles. While well, the team of Fraser and Axiom did best main roster mainstays, the OC and the LWO to challenge the Wolf Dogs for the NXT Tag Team Championships, they became the newest names on the list of teams overcome by the Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic winners. Ever since securing the NXT Tag Team Championships back in February, Corbin and Breaker have been taking victories over everyone from other NXT Tag Teams such as Chase U to main roster units like the Alpha Academy. Breaker is also meant to be a, me a member of the SmackDown roster, though he hasn't wrestled for the Blue Brand since early March so if we get any more details on where it's going with Bron Breaker in the future we'll let you know now we had a big match a big meaty match for the NXT North American Championship and Obafemi has retained his NXT North American title in a brutal triple threat battle against Dijak and Josh Briggs the NXT standard deliver in the battle of the big men Dijak and Briggs went right for the champion to kick off the match but both were taken off their feet and sent backwards Dijak and Briggs attempted to team up to take Femi off his feet throughout the match even both going for the pin on the champion at one point at the same time the match quickly spilled to the outside of the ring and Dijak sent Femi into a rolling chair from behind the announcer's desk. Dijak went to the top rope, but Briggs was able to grab him by the throat and send him flying into Femi, and both crashed to the floor. From then on, the challengers did their best to keep Femi out of the ring. In the biggest spot of the match, Dijak had Briggs across his shoulders as he attempted to climb to the top rope, but was interrupted by Femi, who snuck up behind Dijak and hoisted both men on his shoulders and stood in the middle of the ring for a few moments before dropping them in impressive fashion. After a battle in the ring between the challengers and uh, that saw Dijak hit multiple feast your eyes, he went over to Briggs. The champion picked up Dijak by his neck and powerbombed him onto Briggs. Femi covered Briggs for the victory to retain the NXT North American Championship. And talking about NXT Standard Deliver, a hugely successful event for WWE and their developmental brand because NXT Standard Deliver has set a record. Metaphor, that being Noam Dar or Omensa, Jakara Jackson and Lash Legends, who were the hosts of NXT Standard Deliver, announced that the PLE had an attendance of 16,545 fans. This marks a new attendance record for WWE NXT. Of course, this is just the latest in multiple records that are being shattered by WWE at the moment. WWE WWE has been setting multiple records this weekend as Triple H announced that the April 5 episode of SmackDown was the highest grossing SmackDown ever in SmackDown history. Huge records for WWE at the moment. And finally, we saw retired Rich Holland return to NXT today at Stand and Deliver. Now, a couple of weeks ago, if you remember, there was a segment with Rich Holland during which he said he was leaving in-ring competition indefinitely. Now, that was just part of Holland's ongoing storyline since he joined NXT, but he hadn't been seen since the announcement, and he was even moved to the alumni section of WWE's roster page. Now, he's back on our screens now. He made an appearance during the NXT Stand and Deliver pre-show today, just hours before for WrestleMania 40. Holland joined Megan Barant and Sam Roberts on the stage to preview a couple of matches. His last match was a loss to Sean Spears on March 12. During Spears' entrance for his own pre-show against Joe Gacy, Holland had to be held back from attacking Spears. However, Holland eventually whacked Joe Gacy with a steel chair during Gacy's entrance, so it certainly does look like Holland could be returning to the ring pretty quickly to resume that physicality. But there you go, guys. This latest pro wrestling news for you. A reminder, we will be live in just a few hours for the WrestleMania Night 1 Watch Along. We'll also be live for a WrestleMania Night 1 post show as well. So be sure to join us then. Be sure to click the like button. Be sure to subscribe button right-hand corner. Click those notification bells. You'll be notified when we go live. And I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.